at that, at that time, you know, it was, you know, I was 33, you know, 34, uh, and I was really starting to think there had to be more to life. But it brought me up to 1972, Two. you know, where Gerald called me up and said he was back in town, as I alluded to earlier, and he, you got to get together with this guy, you know, Franklin right. Jones, I think you'll get along. And I recall saying, Franklin Jones, there's nobody called Franklin Jones. <laughs> as, it turned out, as it turned out to be prophetic. But I knew there was more to life. There had to be. So when Gerald called me, you know, he said, uh, why don't you come down? And, and I did on a Friday night. And the book, The Knee of Listening, was at this printer's in Georgia at the time. And um, I, um, he gave me a manuscript. You know, to Gerald to read, you know, to take home. And I was just about to leave, and I did something to this day, I don't know what ever possessed me, because I never did it before. He showed me the hall, and I asked him if I could sleep in there. You know, now I didn't consciously say that, you know, and he said, yeah, because another guy was going to sleep in there, Wes Vaught. Mm -hmm. So he gave me a sleeping bag, and uh, outside of service, I think, was the only other time I used a sleeping bag. But I, I, I needed to, because when he showed me the hall, something must have resonated in my body, you know, because I remember waking up in the morning completely refreshed. It was one of the big turning points, because I took home the knee of listening and devoured it, and it blew my mind, literally blew my mind, because... It, it, he was the first and only time somebody had shown me what reality was, you know, tacitly and physically from the book itself, you know. And in all fairness to myself, nobody told me what to do, you know. So I would walk into the hall, everybody sits down, I lean against the wall, with my horn rim glasses on, and the manuscript in the of listening, and I'm reading it, mm -hmm. you know? And then Beloved walks in, takes his seat, you know, looks around, you know. Now I'm leaning against the wall with this book. I mean, nothing disrespectful. I just didn't know any better, sure. you know. And I'm reading the manuscript, and every once in a while I'd be looking at him, you know, up at him, and he'd be looking at every individual. And at one point in time, he looks at me, and straighten the eye, you know, and I got the message. I took off my glasses, put the book down, the manuscript down, and sat in a semi-lotus position for about a half an hour, and then it was over. And he gets up, and he walks behind the curtain, and his, into his, there was a little office in back, and everybody walks out the front door. I don't know what possessed me, I walked straight out to the front, I mean to the back, to the, his curtains, and he's sitting in there, obviously in bhava, you know, and he looks up at me and he says, what's happening? And it blew my mind, because that is a phrase I have used since childhood to this day, when you know, I say, what's happening to people? Yeah. And what came out of me was so startling that I, when I said it, I, I didn't realize it. I said, I don't know, man. I can't relate to anything or anybody anymore. And um, that's the shape I was in. And he reached up and he grabbed me and he hugged me for a really long time. And from that moment on, I have never, ever felt that way again. He just removed it. Yeah. I like to tell that Leela often because that one hug did it, you know. And he said, what do you do? You know, I said, well, yeah, I own a business. And you know, I introduced myself, you know, as Neil, Neil Panico. And uh, he said, well, why don't you start coming around a bit? You know, and I said, I will, you know. You know, I started going down to the ashram and start sitting with him you know, on, which I believe were Tuesdays nights and Saturday mornings, you know. 
what, it's, it's remarkable what I'm seeing now in retrospect with him passing because uh, I'm writing him a letter now which you know, expresses the, some of what I'm going to tell you. But um, in, the, in the early, early first few months or so, you know, I knew, you knew he was a teacher. You knew, you know, and, and you knew he was some, something unique. And I, I was the first one to call him guru, you know, because Franklin just didn't seem right, you know. And uh, over the years, I, I've known how he sacrifice, sacrifices he made, you know, and how he suffered us, you know. But he, you know, he did it, you know, in human terms, you know. He weaned us in a, in a certain way, and um, and over a long period of time, you know, he really indulged us. I know he indulged me, you know. The only difficulty I have in telling these stories, or Leela's, is because you had to be there. Because what was happening simultaneously in his orbit, you know, I don't know how to describe it anymore. I, you know, I've, I've been considering it. How do you put this into words? You have to understand, he was the God-man. And psychophysically something was happening to him, to us, to the moment, to the world, to the atoms. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to describe it. I don't, because I've been thinking about this a lot, you know, because you know, I've been thinking it's, you know, 37, 38 years, you know, and I haven't even scratched the surface of really understanding this thing, you know. It's, it's a heart thing, you know, and it's not the physical heart. You know, it's a very, very large matter that may be indescribable. You know, you just make these faulty attempts at it. You know, and these stories are not meant to be humorous jokes. You know, you can see in every one of them there's a lesson. You know, one of the things that. Adida said in a clip there was that this, this image here is something that I cannot say in words. It's part of my expression of the divine, that literally there are no words for this manifestation. I wrote him once. I wrote him once that the human tongue has not fashioned a word to describe him. You know? And I really feel that to be true. Because I, I, I'm, I'm listening to myself, you know, trying as best to illustrate it, and partially from lack of education, partially from my own sh shortcomings and so forth, it's, and it's impossibility. But it's tacitly felt, you know, whole bodily, you know. And so there was always, these stories cannot sound isolated. You know, that's why when I ask you guys, how does the, how is, is this, sound good or worth it. It isn't because I want you know, the feedback, you're doing a good job. I want, I'm really curious how you know, it sounds to people, you know, um, because I don't think you understand it. You know, I think it's, it's a, your involvement with the divine, you know, which is individual, you know, however that is achieved. You know, or, but it's certainly there to be achieved. You can, we all can do it, you know.